got my 911 GT3 RS behind me and if you come up close and you take a look at these um these scars you can tell that I finally reached running miles these are um, dead bugs so RIP to the bugs but we're here I can finally floor the car and drive it to 9000 rpm so I thought why not celebrate this occasion with a video showing it go at 9000 9, rpm and also I've been seeing people call this car overrated so let's dig into it and see if it is I have opinions on this matter so we'll see what happens also my friend Brad has a 991.2 GT3 RS so I'm going to give him a side by side comparison so let's jump in hit the road and do 9,000 RPM stuff. Let's go. So I, I, I've just started the car at this point, so I'm not going to be obviously revving it to 9,000 RPM. That would be ridiculous. <laughs> I love you. Oh, can you hear her? She purrs like a kitten. But amongst the car automotive scene right now is not really a fast car anymore. Like cars are a lot faster thanks to the electric revolution. Manufacturers have had to make sports cars even faster. So the 520 odd horsepower in this car was enough to make it a fast car a while ago. But today it's not. I'm choking on air. <laughs> oh my God. I feel like that's the Porsche gods punishing me. Oh, okay, more traffic. Let's take this bend first though. I love you, Porsche! <laughs> so I think now's a great time to show you how bad the backup camera is in a 911 GT3 RS. Um, this is a very large truck on a very narrow road. I feel like they probably shouldn't have come down this road. Oh my God, what a sexy road. Oh, what a sexy road. Look at that. Now you have like testers that are stupidly fast. All the electric cars are basically rapid. The, the performance of what supercars used to be. And the GT3 RS isn't that. But the GT3 RS isn't trying to be a supercar. It's not trying to be, you know, a top speed car. So it's quick with its 520 odd horsepower, but it's not a fast car. It felt a lot faster, but it doesn't hamper the car. I think it even makes the car more enjoyable on roads like this and on track days. 9,000! I couldn't even get to 9,000 before having to lift off. So behind me, I have two versions of the GT3 RS. I have my 992 GT3 RS and Brad's 991.2 GT3 RS in black, both with the YSAC pack. Slightly different, but slightly the same, if that makes sense. So uh, the first thing you notice on this car is that gone are the knacker ducks on the previous model. These are pretty cool. So these were developed by NASA when NASA was called NACA, NACA, and they provide um, intake and cooling with a zero drag loss. So that's nice. But on here, they got rid of that and instead they put one radiator in the front and these are radiator extractor fans. Um, Brad's sitting over there and he was uh, doing some Brad stuff. I don't know. He, he's a regular guest in my life, I guess. Um, the car's also more aggressive with fins on the side, a lot more aerodynamic elements to just improve um, aerodynamic efficiency and improve downforce. Uh, this car is a very fast car around the Nürburgring. I think this car was 15 seconds faster. Was it 15 seconds faster? You don't know, do you? I, well, I'll, let's just say 15, but we're going to put the real number underneath. Um, also, you can see that the slits on the side on this car go all the way down to the end of the tire, basically. I think this is a really cool feature, a really cool element. On this car, it's shortened, but obviously they have the cutaway here where it's narrow to um, relieve pressure from the front wheel. So same philosophy, different ways. You can tell how technology has moved on, even down to the magnesium wheels. The magnesium wheel design on here obviously is to save weight. It looks gorgeous, but on here you can see they even have cutouts to save more weight as they go on. Um, if you move on to the side of the car, the vent on the previous car is a lot larger. This body was taken from the turbo. So they need this intake for the turbo, but they use it for cooling on this model. As you can see here, it's a lot smaller. Again, helping aerodynamic efficiency. As we come to the back, we have the Wang. So this is a wing, this is a Wang. Um, this wing was huge when it came out. Everyone was like, that's a massive wing. But look at this. A lot bigger, a lot more obnoxious, providing a lot more downforce. So his car produces 350 kilograms of downforce. I'm not sure what speed that is. For my car to produce 400 kilograms of downforce, it needs to be going 120 miles an hour. So this is probably more like 170. But um, yeah, there's a quick overview of the cars. The technology has moved on. The interior is a, a lot more racy in this car. One thing I've noticed, let's go and take a look if we've got some space to get through and open, open ye old doors. 
This looks a lot more racy to me just because it's got a lack of technology. When we look at the 992 GT3 RS, you can tell that it's been influenced by the new 992 generation of cars. So there's a lot going on here. And even these buttons, which are missing on the other one, that allow you to adjust things like the suspension setup and traction control and uh, the, the diff at the back. So there's a lot more going on here. And then you have a larger screen, digital displays flanking the rev counter. Still an analog rev counter. Um, if you speak about rev counters, the new 911 has just been announced and they've completely done away with the analog rev counter in the GTS model and in the base Carreras. It'll be interesting to see in the GT3 RS, the 992.2, if they bring back the rev counter and in the gt2 rs if they bring back the rev counter but we'll see but overall i think these are two very stunning cars they look the same look same same but different <laughs> that's what they are um i actually think the previous generation brad's car looks slightly better i think it just looks less over the top this looks like a race car which you can drive on the road. This looks like a road car that you can drive on the racetrack. But yeah, those are the two cars side by side. Um, let me quickly ask Brad his opinion on the cars. I'm being blinded because you've got stones. Bradley. Hello everyone. Bradley, GT3 RS uh, enthusiast. Yeah, Brad, which proper. car do you prefer? Do you prefer the 992 or 991.2? I do prefer your one. Okay. But, but I do prefer my one as well. Okay, yeah, you can't prefer, that's not if how I had preference to pick, works. I'd pick my one. Would you? Yeah, I think I, I think your generation actually looks a lot more reasonable. It, it, I don't know, it just feels less obnoxious. Sometimes I drive mine and I'm worried, like, do I look like a, a censored loud. word? Yeah. Let's, I, want, I want to hear his car start. He has a JCR exhaust, and I'll compare it to the sound of my car. Let me go to the rear. So here, here, here's the sound of his car. I'm preparing. That's a really nice sound. Can't you? I mean, it's all right. It's no Gintani SVJ. <laughs> oh God, he's gonna put it in neutral. Here's a lesson on what you don't do when you have a cold engine. <laughs> but yeah, that's the sound of his car. Let me start mine up. Take a listen to, to this. The, they, they have the exact same engine, by the way. Slightly different tune, levels of tune and um, some different elements, uh, but essentially it is the same flat six, four liter engine. Uh, so they should actually sound the same, but mine's got a stock exhaust. But if I did put that exhaust on there, it would hopefully sound the same. Same, same, but different. I feel like um, we need some fly, fly, flyby sounds. Should we get flyby sounds? I feel like we should get a little camera nod. Look at that. Right, cool. Let's, let's get some flybys. So both cars are absolute monsters. They're great to drive. I've driven a 991.2 before and I really love the experience. This definitely feels more dialed in and more track focused. I love the fact you can adjust stuff, although I haven't really played around with it yet because I haven't been on track and the uh, predetermined bones are actually good enough. But I guess the only thing left is to address is are Porsches or is the GT3 RS in particular an overhyped car? I've heard a lot of people saying this. I see it online all the time. I see it on TikTok, especially people saying that car's just hype, it's overhyped, there's nothing special. As someone that owns several cars, I can confirm it's not overhyped. It is as good as people make it out to be. It's, I don't know, it's a very overwhelming experience to drive it because there's so much grip and I've never experienced anything like that in a road car. It's completely out of this world when it comes to road performance and handling. I can only imagine what it's like on track. I haven't taken it on track yet, but I plan to. 
I don't think it's an overhyped car. I think it deserves the hype because honestly, the technology that's in this car, everything they've done is revolutionary and it just gets me more excited to see what the 992.2 GT3 RS would be like. But I understand that people flipping the car and people are like idolizing the cars if it's the best thing on earth of all time, maybe putting people off. But in, in, in this scenario, I, I love it. I think, I think it's an awesome car. So um, I'm gonna hop back in and bang it to 9,000 RPM again. Maybe do a launch or two. And um, I'll see you next week. Remember to like and subscribe. I always forget to say that. Like and subscribe and say thanks to Brad for being in the video. <laughs> <laughs>